For this question, we are given the function f of x is equal to ln of x plus 4. And then we have to do these questions. I know it has a lot of questions, but it's okay because I know you can handle it. For the first part is that we are going to find the domain of f. This is ln of x plus 4. ln is log base e. So we are talking about a log function. So that means we have to make sure the inside. So let me write down. We have to make sure. The inside expression, which is the x plus 4, right? We have to make sure that this has to be greater than 0. This is the inequality that we have to set up for the domain. And then to solve this, we can just subtract from both sides. And you will see that this is just going to be x is greater than negative 4. And then we are done. So for part A, domain, then we use capital D for that. This is telling us we have to have negative 4 and bigger, right? So we will have negative 4 to pass the infinity. Well, for the negative 4, we are not including it, so parentheses right here. And for the infinity, parentheses as well. Okay, because we cannot include infinity. Next, we are going to graph the function. So let me write it down here for part B. We are going to graph the original. And to show you, I'm going to make a table. And we will choose some x values. And the y's are just this right here. y is the same as f of x right here, which is ln of x plus 4. And then we are going to select a couple x values. The first one that I'm going to use is negative 4. And how did I choose negative 4? Well, it's because of this number right here. Okay. Plugging negative 4 into this x, what do we get? We will have ln of Negative 4 plus 4 is what? It's just 0, right? And now what's ln of 0? Is it 0? No. This right here, it's undefined. Log of any base, we cannot have a 0 inside, right? So, this is undefined, but there is an important information that is telling us. Whenever we are trying to make a graph, if we end up with ln of 0, this is telling us that we will have a vertical acetone on the graph. I know this is not doable for the computation, but then for the graph, we will have to indicate that we will have a vertical acetone. And let me show you right here. This is the x-axis, and then here is the y-axis. When x is negative 4, let me just put it down right here. And to indicate the vertical acetone, we will have just a vertical dashed line like that. And this is the dashed line that we have to include for the vertical acetone. And let me write down, this is x is equal to negative 4. So you shall look for ln of what x will give you 0, which in this case is negative 4 for the vertical, vertical acetone. The next x value that I'm going to use is negative 3. And let's see, when we plug in negative 3 into this x, we get ln negative 3 plus 4 is 1. And now what's ln of 1? Well, log of any base, if the inside is 1, this will give you 0. A nice number, right? So when x is negative 3, let me indicate that to be right here. The y value is 0. So that means we have a point right here, negative 3, 0. That's good. Next, I'm going to choose just an x value because I know this is not going to be a nice number anymore. I'm just going to select when x is equal to 0. In that case, we will get ln of 0 plus 4. That will give us a 4 inside. And this is not a nice number. We can just use a calculator to compute it. This is about okay, 1.386. So this is telling us we have the point 0, 1.386. So 0 is right here for the x, and then the y, let me just say it's right here, this is 1.386. And we have another point here, right? And this is enough. You see, we have the vertical acetone and two other points. This is enough to graph a log function. And this is how we are going to do it. Keep in mind, whenever the graph is approaching to the vertical acetone, the graph is going to be either go straight down or go straight up. And you see, we can use these two points. I'm going to connect the points right here with a nice curve. And then if we follow it back, 
and you see that I will have to go straight down, right? So we are done with the graph, and let's talk about part C. For part C here, we have to tell the range and the acetal of F. Well, what does range mean? Range is all the possible y values. Remember, for domain, it was all the possible x values. And it was easier because we can just do computations. For range, we usually have to rely on the graph unless we do some calculus. But we have the graph right here already, so we can tell the range from the graph. As we can see, this graph right here is straight down, right? That means it's going down toward y is negative infinity. So we will put down negative infinity, comma, and then as you can see from this side here, this function is keep going up and up and up. This function will never be horizontal. It will keep going up and up and up. So the y value is going toward positive infinity. So in this case, the range is negative infinity to positive infinity with parentheses because you cannot include infinities. And you can also put down all real numbers. Either way, it's fine. Okay? Well, we have to tell the acetopes as well. So let's talk about the vertical acetope, which we did that already, didn't we? The vertical acetope is x is equal to negative 4. So let me just put that down. x is equal to negative 4. How about we also have a different type, right? The horizontal acetope. Do we have any horizontal acetope right here? No. Because this graph here, it will never be horizontal, so I will just put down none. So we are done with the things that we have to say about the original function f of x, and now moving on to the inverse of f. For part d, and I will do the rest in blue, so you can see the difference. We are going to write an expression for the inverse of f, and this is how we are going to do it. Refer back to the original. This is f of x, which is ln of x plus 4. We first write f of x as y, and then this is still ln of x plus 4, right? And keep in mind, for the inverse, the most important idea is that the x and y got switched. And what I mean by that is, this is the original, right? y is equal to ln of x plus 4. But then for the inverse, we see we have this y, we are going to put down x. And then we will have equal, and this is ln, and we have the parentheses, we saw this x, and it becomes y now, and we will have the plus 4. Once again, for the inverse, the x and y got switched from the original. That's the main idea. And then, our goal is to isolate this y right here, so we can write an expression for the inverse right here. To do that, because the y is inside of the ln function, and keep in mind, ln is log base e. So what we have to do is, we are going to pretend these two are the exponents, and then we do e to this power, and we do e to that power. The reason we do that is so the e and the ln will cancel each other out. And then we will have e to the x on the left hand side, and that's equal to y plus 4. And we still have to isolate this y. We can do that easily by subtracting 4 on both sides. Then we get y is equal to e to the x minus 4. And then this right here is the inverse. We will write it down with the notation. F inverse like this is equal to e to the x minus 4. And then we are done. That's for part D. Next, we'll do part E. We have to find the domain and the range for the inverse function. So let me put down d for domain and the range for the inverse. And let me ask you, do we have to do a lot of work for this? No, because remember that the domain, we're trying to find all the possible x values, right? But then the x values for the inverse, it will be the y value of the original. The domain of the inverse is the range of the original because the x and y got switched, right? So we can just say the domain for this is the range of the original, which is the negative infinity to positive infinity. Likewise, the range for the inverse, it will be the domain of the original. So I will put down negative 4, comma, infinity. That's it. We don't have to do any computation 
This is conceptional. At the very end, we are going to graph the inverse function. So let me put it down right here. This is part f. We are going to graph the inverse right here. And once again, I will show you with the table. We have the x and we have the y. And this time, the y is e to the x minus 4. And I will show you what the x values that I'm going to consider. First, I will use 0. And I'll put it down here. Plugging 0 into this x, you get e to the 0, which is 1. 1 minus 4 is negative 3, right? And there's a nice thing you should notice. Earlier, we had negative 3, comma, 0. This time for the inverse, we have 0, comma, negative 3. Why? Because, once again, the x and the y got switched. What should I use for the other x value? Well, let's just look at the y values of the original. I'm going to put down 1.386 right here. 1.386 for the x value of the inverse. And what's the y value right here then? It has to be 0 because, well, just look at this, pretty much the backwards, right? And I'm ready to go. Let me draw the graph right here. I will indicate the first point, which is 0, comma, negative 3. Let me put it down here. Okay, we have the first point right here. And then we also have another point, which is 1.386, comma, 0. And let me just put it down here. This is 1.386 for the x value and the y value is 0. So the point is right here. And now what? This is technically not good enough yet because as you can see, the original had the vertical asymptote when x is equal to negative 4, right? For the inverse, well, it's not the x anymore. I will switch the x to become y. We will have a y equals to negative 4 to consider. Earlier, it was a vertical asymptote, right? Let me just indicate that it was a vertical asymptote. But now, this time, this y is equal to negative 4. It represents a horizontal acetal on the graph right here. To indicate that, we go to y is equal to negative 4, which is down here. And then I'm going to draw a horizontal dash line. Like that. And we are good to go. You see, when we connect the dots like this from here to here, this is how the graph will look like, right? And we will continue from here and then when you approach the horizontal asymptote, the function will become flat. Okay, this is the inverse function. And this right here is the inverse, and this right here was the original. I know this question was long, but good job, you just finished it.